that I will close public comment and go to Supervisor's Committee reports and Supervisor Euler. Yes, Mr. Chairman. As you know, I've long been an advocate for reprioritizing government spending to make sure that our primary responsi responsibility is met, that of helping productive people be productive. Uh, according to our founders, governments were instituted among men to provide for, first and foremost, the basic tools of commerce. From these tools, public protection and public infrastructure, we, the United States of America, would develop an economy that would establish preeminence and remain second to none for two centuries. In the vein of what we're here to discuss today, the budget, and with the challenges brought to bear on our county budget by state and federal requirements, absent funding, I believe it's incumbent upon our board to do what we can to live within our means, given the constraints of outside pressures. And where outside pressures exist that lead to the growth of our spending beyond the growth of our population plus inflation, I believe we should fight it at every turn. Conversely, I believe where suggestions are politically motivated to drive the interest of an individual or a small group at the expense of the average taxpayer, that inconsistency should be revealed and the suggestion considered accordingly. To that end, I propose the creation of a committee of the Board of Supervisors called the Right Sizing of County Government. This committee would evaluate all proposals to control current costs, including privatizing existing public functions and control future expenses, including the skyrocketing costs of public employee retirement and health care. Recently, our colleague, Ms. Montgomery, made a few recommendations regarding cover cutting government costs and increasing accountability. I'd like to examine her suggestions in light of the mandate of my newly proposed committee. Jennifer, you suggest that we, quote, reconfirm the countywide policy that all positions be publicly advertised and make the process fully transparent, end quote. First of all, no such policy exists. Second, within just the first six months as supervisor, Jennifer, you personally recruited and hired three different people as your county aide, each with a total compensation exceeding $80,000 a year, and each without advertising the position or any other public notice of vacancy. The first, Rob Haswell, was your campaign manager. So much for fully transparent. Now, I'm not critical of you appointing your aides without advertising the position, nor of the aides you've appointed. I'm just wondering why you think a quote unquote reconfirmation of a policy that doesn't exist is necessary to require others to adhere to a practice that you won't. Next, you suggest that quote, the Board of Supervisors and CEO staff should turn in their county credit cards and use personal cards so each expenditure can be scrutinized. You conclude this suggestion by announcing, I've already handed in my credit card. True, you did. Exactly two days before your column ran, but not before managing to rack up over $2,300 in charges in your first six months, and not one penny of that was fuel for your vehicle. Now, while I have no doubt they were legitimate county business purchases, what is the difference between reimbursing from your personal card and, not, and using the county card? Nothing, except using a county card, is actually a more open and transparent way for tracking purchases for county business, and I thought that's what we wanted. Since I just mentioned vehicle mileage, in a recent Auburn Journal story about the use of county cars by supervisors, Jennifer, you were celebrated as being the only member of the board to not use a county car, but rather seek reimbursement for using your own vehicle. The vehicle that you refused was your predecessor's 2005 Toyota 4Runner 4x4. The vehicle is paid for and owned by the county. Previous fuel and maintenance costs worked out to about 17 cents per mile. Based on your mileage reimbursements to date, if you were driving the county-owned vehicle, the cost to taxpayers would have been approximately $1,700. Instead, you've taken home more than $5,700 in mileage reimbursement expense, a difference of $4,000 out of our pockets. You suggest that we temporarily suspend the supervisor's revenue sharing program. However, on May 12, 2009, just five months into your term, you requested $9,530 in revenue sharing funds for various causes in your district. This amount is 100% of everything that was available to you and over 50% more than I requested for my district in the entire fiscal year. You suggest that we create a web page that lists every senior county employee or, or elected official by position list-based salary, overtime, benefits, and other quote-unquote perks that make the list and make the list sortable by name, position, and salary. I agree with this one, but it doesn't go far enough. Why limit it to just senior managers and elected officials? I think the public deserves to see 
that the average county employee's cost to the county is just over $100,000 per year and the other abuses wrought by civil service and collective bargaining. Will you join me in calling for an end to those? While we're on the subject of compensation, you suggest agendize and discuss merit increases and whether increases for unclassified employees are appropriate in difficult financial times and if the county should continue the policy. Now, we should note, Jennifer, you voted in favor of every merit, every merit increase that's come before our board. Again, why limit this just to unclassified employees when approximately two-thirds of these increases go to the rank and file? At the March 18, 2008 strategic planning session of the Board of Supervisors, as reported in the Auburn Journal, I called for the across-the-board suspension of all merit increases and cost of living adjustments. Will you join me in that? With these facts in mind, Jennifer, I shake my head when you observe when times are good, it's easy to become lax. What's a few bucks here and there, right? And then emphatically answer your own rhetorical question, wrong, not anymore and not on my watch. Yes, Jennifer, on your watch and in these specific instances under your direction. And while I'm at it, Mr. Chairman, it should be noted that the same Auburn Journal that supports Jennifer's suggestions also questioned that, quote, raises were given in the form of merit increases to county employees at the same time 33 county court employees lost their jobs. Now, in citing this statistic in support of their call for reform, either the Auburn Journal doesn't understand that those 33 positions were funded by the state and cut by the state and that the county no longer plays a role in funding court positions, or they do understand and they intentionally tried to mislead the public. Similarly, when the journal responds to Jennifer's suggestion of creating a county webpage cataloging executive pay by observing, quote, top county officials accused of giving themselves unauthorized raises, as Placer does, erodes the public trust, they either should know or don't know, they either should know and, or, and don't, or know and don't care that the top county official accused of giving himself an unauthorized raise was a court employee, again, governed by the state, not the county. They, Tony Azarian, Derek Rothy, Gus Thompson, and the rest, the Auburn Journal editorial staff, have the audacity to decry the erosion of public trust after intentionally misrepresenting these facts? In closing, Mr. Chairman, I support the creation of a committee of the Board of Supervisors that in light of our declining tax base and the escalating cost of doing business under state and federal mandates and within the constraints of civil service and collective bargaining looks for real ways to reform a system that was fundamentally broken far before the national economy fell, has no real hope of recovering anytime soon. And to the extent that this committee will explore all options to cut the ever-increasing size and cost of government to what can reasonably be sustained I volunteer to serve.